Hey everybody, my name is Adam Bundy and I'm an exhibitions designer here at Frederick Meyer Gardens and Sculpture Park. And it's that time of year again to celebrate this fall season with our annual Chrysanthemums and More exhibition, where the theme this year is unexpected color. And in the spirit of unexpected color, I'm gonna go through some basic color theory, give you some insight in how we use color in our exhibitions, show you some things you can do at home, and have you on your way using color like a pro. So let's do it. Here, we have our beautiful Chrysanthemum color wheel. But for now, we're not going to concern ourselves with the full flower quite yet. Rather, we're going to focus on the back set of colors and see how they set the stage for the full flower. Getting more specific, we start with the three primary colors, which are yellow, red, and blue. Mixing the primary colors together, you can make secondary colors. Red and blue make purple, blue and yellow make green, and yellow and red make orange. You can also mix secondary colors and primary colors together to make tertiary colors. Tertiary colors are made by mixing primary and secondary colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Now before we go any further, and in case you don't believe me, I'm going to show you how you can mix the three primary colors together to get secondary and tertiary colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our primary colors, get a little bit of yellow or red, and some blue and arrange them equally apart. When we mix some blue with some yellow, we'll start to see some green. And you can play around with the amount of each color you put like this. It's a little darker with the blue. So we'll see what happens when we put some more yellow in the mix. And you can see it starts to lighten up. Now, let's see what happens when we put a little more yellow with our red. You'll see it soon starts to look orange. Now, let's get some blue with our red. It's a little dark, but when we spread it thin, you can see that nice color purple in there. And that's what we're aiming for right now with these secondary colors, pulling them out. What do you say we do some tertiary? Let's go over here, some more yellow, maybe a little more blue. Don't be afraid of it. If you do this at home, that's one thing you gotta do, especially when you're first learning. Just don't be afraid of it. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Adam, I see you got black and white there. What happens if we throw those into the mix? Well, hold your horses, we'll get to that soon. But first, let's take a look back at our chrysanthemum color wheel and review some terms that we can use to better understand and communicate about color. All right, let's look at some color terms. The first term we're gonna look at is hue. You can think of hue as the origin color. Think of the six primary and secondary colors that are then manipulated to create a specific color. Next, we'll look at complementary. Complementary colors are across from each other on the color wheel. For example, red and green, seen a lot around the holidays, or blue and orange, which you'll see we use to our advantage in this exhibition. Analogous colors are three to four colors next to each other on the color wheel. For example, yellow, yellow-orange, and orange. Warm colors have an orange, red, or yellow hue. Cool colors have a blue, green, or purple hue. Saturation means the intensity or purity of a color. Higher saturation means more intense color. If it's desaturated, it means the color looks washed out or grayed out. Next, we'll take a look at value. Value is the degree of lightness or darkness. The greater the value difference, the higher the contrast. And finally, we'll look at tint, tone, and shade. Tint is a color produced by adding white. Tone is a color produced by adding gray, and shade is a color produced by adding black. Now, can you guess what we're gonna do next? That's right, make some tints, tones, and shades using black and white. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with white. 
Put some over here, put a little bit in the middle. And then we're gonna grab our black, set it up just like this. And what do you say we grab some red? Put a dab by each of those. What we'll need to do, since we don't have gray yet, we've gotta mix a little bit of black with our white right here until we get a nice gray color. Let's see what happens when we tint this red a little bit. Remember, tinting means a color created by adding white. Lightened it up a little bit, almost looks pink. A tone, remember, is a color made by adding gray. And a shade is a color made by adding black. But that's essentially it. Tints, tones, and shades made by mixing color with white, gray, and black. So now that we have incredible color mixing abilities and a good understanding of how colors relate to each other, let's take a look at color palettes. Color palettes are groups of colors that are selected based upon how they look, feel, and function with each other, usually to convey a certain feeling or message. We use color palettes in our exhibitions to achieve harmony and consistency through all of our mediums, from plant material to print material and all other exhibition components you'll notice here at Meyer Gardens. And thanks to our newly refined knowledge of color theory, we can explain why these colors work together the way they do. The cool hues of dark purple, bright pink, periwinkle, and blue-green provide an analogous harmony that is nicely complemented by the vibrant and energetic orange. So that's gonna do it for our quick color theory lesson today. I hope you learned something new, or at least got a refresher on something you sort of knew. And I look forward to seeing you here during our Chrysanthemums and More Unexpected Color Exhibition here at Meyer Gardens. We'll see you around.